What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, and we're also going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 28th of December in 2018. But before we do talk about these topics, for all you new viewers out there, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys who want to learn more about that, please feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group if you guys want to be in contact and stay in touch with our community of about 375 investors and traders on Discord and about 115 people in the Facebook group. And again, all of those are linked down below in the description box. So what happened today, guys? in the overall markets well just judging off the closing price of the Dow Jones it wasn't too crazy of a day right we were down about 76 points at the close down about 0.3 percent but that closing price doesn't tell the whole story of the day and we'll get into that in a couple of minutes and we see here the S&P 500 down about three percent or three dollars rather down about 0.12 percent on the day and the Nasdaq composite down about point four three percent down about twenty seven dollars and twenty seven or twenty five cents rather on the day so back to the Dow Jones guys let's talk about what these technicals are telling me so obviously we've seen a pretty bloody stock market from the beginning of October when we peaked at about $27,000 in the Dow Jones. We started to consolidate roughly at this support over this course from about, you know, the end of October all the way to, you know, the beginning of, you know, December roughly. We were consolidating at around $24,300. And then once we broke that support, guys, very critical support at around $24,300. And this was more towards the middle of December, more more towards the beginning to middle of December, that is when a lot of quick panic selling started to kick in. And we actually had one of the worst, if not the worst December in the history of the stock market, followed by the worst Christmas Eve ever in the stock market. Actually, no, in the Dow Jones, actually the worst Christmas Eve ever actually might have been in the stock market. I forget right now off the top of my head, but it was either the worst Christmas Eve for the overall stock market or the worst Christmas Eve for the Dow Jones. Let me know down below in the comment section if you guys know uh, the exact fact, but I know for a fact that it's one of those two. But anyway, you know, we had the worst Christmas Eve and then we had that 1000 point surge, I believe on Tuesday in the Dow Jones where it literally went from 21,600 all the way up to about $22,800, I believe. And on that day, we bounced on the support from back in August of 2017 at around $21,600. And this literally happened, I believe, on the 26th of December. Just two days ago, we had this ridiculous day. And we can see it on this five-day, 15-minute chart. I believe it was this day right here, right? We ended up closing the day previously at about $22,400. We pushed down to about $21,700. And we had that ridiculous swing all all the way back up to $22,800. And what is this chart and what is this trend telling us over the past five days? Well, what it's telling me, guys, is that we are slowly making an uptrending pattern in the Dow Jones, right? Ever since we had that 1,000 point day, this chart right here on the five day, 15 minute is telling us that the Dow is making higher lows and it's making lower highs. And by that, I mean, take a look at this low right here at about 21,700. The next low is at about 22,300. And we're currently at a bounce spot 
in the Dow Jones right now after today's market performance on top of that 50 simple moving average support from yesterday, roughly at about $23,000. So what I'm going to be watching for, honestly, the next trading session that we have next week is to see whether or not the Dow is going to hold this support on the 5-day 15-minute or are we going to break below it and continue the downtrending pattern. And in my opinion, guys, we're at a very critical technical spot right now on this 5-day 15-minute. If we break this trend that I just drew for you guys, if we break this trend, that's clearly a break of trend and we could be reversing to the downside from there for more selling, more red days, right? But if we bounce here and continue to push up, we will be testing another higher high at that point and even continue to you know, get deeper and deeper or further and further into this reversal pattern that the uh, Dow Jones is showing. But just because we're seeing a slight reversal of a couple of days, don't let this fool you from the overall picture that we see here on this 90-day two-hour chart. Just take a look at this, guys. Judging off this chart for the Dow Jones, we're still making lower lows and we're at a rejection spot for the Dow Jones on the 50-day simple moving average on this 90-day two-hour chart. So this has been a resistance in the past, guys, pretty much all here and from the middle of October all the way to the, you know, the end of October. We got rejected here again. We got rejected here all the way pretty much the whole month of December. And now just because we had a couple of days of green in a row doesn't mean anything until we get out of this 180 simple moving average on the 90-day two-hour chart, in my personal opinion, because we've seen this happen before, guys. We've We've seen a couple of days in a row followed by even more red days and even more selling. So this could be exactly what we've seen in the past for the Dow Jones, you know, we're having a couple of green days in a row. We very well could hit get rejected here and continue to sell off even more aggressively in the coming months and historically guys or over the past couple of years rather, January has been a red month. So, you know, I've been saying this, guys, typically we have good months from December to January, but, you know, we had a bad month. So is this does this mean we're going to have a good month in January, right, since we had a bad month in December? I don't really think it works like that, right? So just because we had a, de a December bad month, this could mean that it could drag over into, uh, you know, January when we typically do have bad months historically. So just keep an eye on this chart, guys, especially as we're getting into the new year, because again, January is typically a bad month for uh, the stock market. And I'm sure a bunch of you guys can relate to this that have been you know, in the game for a while that are experienced. You probably can relate to that. So that's what we're looking at in terms of the Dow Jones, guys. Just because we had a couple of green days in a row. Don't let this make you think that we're reversing in price. We've been through this over the past couple of months, you know, but once we see a break, in my personal opinion, out of this 180 SMA, you know, and back into the 24,000s or 25,000s, uh, that's going to be more of a reversal sign to the upside, in my personal opinion. So jot that down, take a note of that, but, uh, you know, I think there's more selling to come, in my personal opinion, but, you you know, only time will tell at this point. So taking a look at the S&P 500, very similar situation, right? We had a couple of green days. The S&P had about a 120 point day that day that the Dow Jones had a ridiculous push. Obviously, the S&P did very well as well, right? We were up 5% in this index, 5% in the NASDAQ, and obviously roughly 5% in the Dow Jones on that day. But judging off of this closer term chart here, very similar pattern pattern to the Dow Jones, right? We're making lower highs or, or higher lows rather. I'm so used to saying lower highs because we've been, you know, downtrending. But now that we're slowly reversing back up, we're seeing some green days. Finally, I can say higher lows, right? We're seeing higher lows. We're seeing um, 
you know, higher highs being formed on this S&P chart. And we're holding it at the close. We're holding the trend at the close of the market today. And what I'm going to be looking for, very similar to the Dow Jones, Dow Jones guys, is are we going to break this trend to the downside or are we going to bounce and have another couple of green days in a row next week? Only time will tell. But us as traders, the best thing we can do is do our due diligence, put the time in, study the charts, and and watch pre-market movements, future movements, uh, just to really dictate what we're going to be trading the next day, the next week, the next month. Uh, you know, typically we can't really, uh, it's been difficult to predict trades for about a week or two now, or like a week or two out is what I'm saying because of the volatility of the market. But Typically, you know, I've been planning my trades out for at least one, two days ahead, judging off these charts. Again, because the market has been extremely volatile, it's very hard to do technical analysis for swing trades right now, which is why I actually, you know, haven't been swing trading. You guys should know this if you've been watching my videos. I've been mostly day trading over the past couple of weeks at this point. So, you know, the charts look very similar, guys. Just take a look and keep an eye on that trend, like I said, and on the 90-day two hour chart you know we're at a resistance on the s p as well under that 50 day simple moving average so if we were to break out of this and break out of the 180 sma on this chart right here this 90 day chart you know that's going to be a strong reversal pattern to the upside for the s p 500 but again till then we're still technically in a downtrending pattern with the s p or the, rather the uh, 50 simple moving average you know acting as a resistance over the past couple of weeks. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ very quickly before I tell you guys what I traded today. And, uh, you know, similar patterns to the Dow and the S&P guys. The NASDAQ is making lower lows, you know, lower highs on this 180 or rather this 90-day two-hour chart. But the movement over the past couple of days, you know, has been indicating of, uh, you know, of, a, of, of an uptrend reversal pattern, right? You know, we've been seeing the higher highs, we've been seeing the higher lows, and we're still holding that trend line uh, and really just showing signs of more further push up. And again, if we break this trend, that's not going to be a good sign and could indicate more downside to come. But if we hold this and push for a higher high, that means that we could see some more green days to come. And we're obviously going to continue to push up in price if that does end up happening. So the NASDAQ guys, if we're looking at some longer term supports here, we held that 6,000 support. Well, we actually dipped below it and bounced on the 5,800 support on that big sell-off day and now we pushed above it i think that was because of the huge five percent push up two days ago i think we pushed back of up above that six thousand uh support and now we're hovering at about 6300 which is actually right under a uh you know previous support which is now a resistance for the NASDAQ. And remember guys, whenever we break, you know, new supports or previous supports, they become uh, new resistance levels, right? So we broke below it a couple of days ago and now we're fighting to get above it, which is making it a new uh, resistance point. So if we're judging on the 180, very similar to the uh, Dow and the S&P, we need to see a break out of this 180 SMA back into the 6,800 level, maybe even $7,000 before we see a clear reversal pattern in my personal opinion to the upside on the nasdaq composite so let's take a look very quickly at what i traded today and that was d w t and d w t guys beautiful chart here if we're just looking at the one day it had a very nice push in the morning and that is where i ended up taking 2.8 percent profit on d w t and for those of you guys that don't know d w t uh correlates with crude oil slash c l and whenever slash c l is going down in price that is when dwt is going down in price as well and we can see here guys just judging off the five day five minute chart we had a very big push up this day this is when the market surged we went from about 
42.50 in crude oil all the way to 47 dollars and from there we've been slowly making lower highs and in the process of making lower lows so this has made dwt actually be a pretty decent play over the past couple of days and if we're judging on the one day one minute time frame to see where i personally got in well it was in this drop from about 45 dollars all the way down, actually it was at 45.20 rather, all the way down to about $44.50. And during this push down from about 9.50 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard all the way to about 11 a.m., that is when DWT had that nice little run of about 5-6%, I believe, and I was able to grab about uh, what was it like 2.8% profit so let's see what it ended up running I think see the same time at around 10 o'clock and went from 1657 all the way up to 1740 again like I said <coughs> it moved about five six percent and very simple, guys. Once I saw that crude oil was dropping very aggressively, I started to scale into my DWT position. I took a position as we bounced on this 180 SMA because this was a uh, support in the pre-market hours. And this was a very uh, textbook pre-market play uh, you know, that really goes with my strategy that I use all the time. And by this, I mean, you know, when we see a stock or an ETF push up to a high in the pre-market hours, right? And then we see a big sell-off heading into the market. What that does is that opens up a margin of profit. And I like to, you know, pay attention to stocks and ETFs like this to see if they're able to fill that gap back up that we, you know, fell from, uh, you know, the pre-market market highs down to the market open, right? And by that, I mean, you know, we obviously fell from 1730 all the way down to 1630 from the pre-market highs, you know, heading into the market roughly, right? And this opened up the gap. And I wanted to see if I was able to trade that gap back up, if we were able to bounce and, you know, try and fill that gap to the upside. And that's exactly what ended up happening. And I noticed it start happening when we were bouncing and aggressively pushing up above this uh, 180 SMA. So I ended up taking a position right at around 1675, I believe initially. I wanted to break above this resistance right here at about 1690 before adding more money. We ended up doing that. Obviously, we had a nice clean push up here. We really don't see this too much. I mean, you do see it a lot, but you know, it's kind of difficult to catch these. But today was one of those days that I did catch it. So from 1675, guys, I ended up adding more money at about 17. I believe and we can see that brought my total uh, you know my average cost roughly to about 1688 I believe and from there you know I pretty much got 2.8 percent all the way up to about $17.35 and I actually sold out at about at this time right here right because I always talk about selling out of positions when you're seeing a formation of a double top right we see the double top forming right here and you know why I held through this was to see if it was going to make another higher high or not and once I noticed that it wasn't bouncing up to another higher high we were having a tough spot here at the previous resistance at about 17 I decided to just take my profits off the board and we noticed after that we took the big dump back to $16 and that was proven to be the optimal time to sell, you know, DWT. So I got 2.8% out of that. That was my only trade of the day, guys. I wanted to play it safe today since it was Friday. I wanted to keep it green. And 2.8% is, you know, right in the ballpark of what I aim to get every single day in terms of percentage profit trading in the stock market. So I'm going to end the video right here, guys. I don't want to hold you guys too long. I can see I've already been recording for nearly 20 minutes, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and go check out that previous video that I uploaded earlier today on the top three savings accounts that you should be looking at in 2019. These are high 
high-yielding savings accounts. And if you guys are interested in, you know, using a savings account that is way better and, you know, way higher yielding than the traditional savings accounts, go check out that video and you'll see three of them. And one of them I personally use that are very high-yielding, solid, FDIC-insured savings accounts. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go watch that video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one as well. I'll catch you guys in the video tomorrow. Have a great weekend. I hope you all had a fantastic trading week. Thanks for all the support. As always, peace out.